Welcome to topic 2.7. Today in economics, we are going to talk about public goods and externalities. Uh, when you're done, you should be able to identify examples of public goods, uh, analyze a, what constitutes a market failure, and then evaluate how the government allocates some resources by managing those externalities. So let's go to our key terms, because you're probably already saying, what are externalities? Uh, let's start with a public good. And a public good is a, a shared good or service for which it would be inefficient and impractical to make consumers pay individually and to exclude those that do not pay. Think of Moss Wright Park or Hendersonville Park, Drake's Creek Park. What if you had to pay every time you went there? And then it would only be the people that could pay that got to go. What about people that couldn't afford to? And that's something that we all need to benefit from. The public sector, anytime you, you hear something about the public sector, this is the part of the economy that involves transactions of the government. And if it's private sector, it's not going to include the government. So that's individuals and businesses. Infrastructure, you'll hear me talk about this. Uh, we talked about it in topic one. Brazil had uh, poor infrastructure. Uh, these are basic facilities that are needed for a society to function and grow. Like you have to have roads for people to get places. You need buildings for people to open a, a business in. You need some sort of government to regulate things. Now, a free rider um, in economics is probably different than what you're thinking. This is someone who would not be willing to pay for, cer for a certain good or service, but who would get the benefits of it anyway, if it's a, a public good. We're all free riders, okay? Because if I brought up the Moss Wright thing again, if you had to have an annual like membership to it, to use it, how many of you would do it? Okay. And of those people that say, no, I wouldn't, how many of you go to Moss Wright Park? Yeah, it's, you're a free rider. Yeah. We're, we're all. Market failure. Uh, now, you're probably thinking this is something that just goes bankrupt and it goes belly up. Not in this case. When we're talking in economics, a market failure is something that's going to fail in the free market. It would fail as a private business, um, but it can be a success if it's a public good. For example, Beach High School. If it was a private school, as it is, would people necessarily pay to come? Don't know. But as a public good, it's very successful. We have free riders here. Yes, if you come to school and you wouldn't pay for it, but you're willing to take it for free, it's a free rider. It's okay. Um, like I said, we all do that with certain things. Externality. This is a side effect of a good or service that it can uh, generate costs, a positive or negative uh, effects to someone other than the person making the decision. Uh, and there's externalities even in everyday life. Some of us make a decision and go, oh, wow, I didn't realize that was gonna hurt somebody. Ooh. Or, wow, I did that and it benefited, you know, and didn't know it would, but it benefits these people. Um, poverty threshold. There is an actual dollar amount when you do your taxes that if you are below that dollar amount of income, you are considered in poverty. And this is something that's been widely debated uh, in the last several years as to is our poverty threshold correct? Many people believe that number should be a higher number because there are people that aren't considered in poverty who really are living that way uh, and that it needs to be adjusted. And then welfare, this is one of our uh, government aids to the poor. Uh, it's there automatically. Um, it's one of our entitlement programs. That's what I was trying to think of. We have all kinds of public goods. Beach High School is a public good, Moss Wright Park. If you go to the library, that's a public good. Uh, the roads you're driving on, the bridges you're crossing, uh, they're all public goods. And just think about it, you know, what if you had to pay to go on the roads you're on? We've all been to Florida, we've probably all seen a toll bridge where you have to pay for that. Uh, what if you had to do that for every street you drove on? That would be, that would be awful. Oh, I can't go down that street because I didn't pay to go down that, so I gotta go the long way around. Uh, so we're going to talk about how do you determine something needs to be a public good? Because uh, we're going to weigh the costs and the benefits. 
And then we're also going to talk about the free rider program. Uh, mail delivery. This is a public service. Uh, and it's been around. I mean, they were delivering mail by horse and buggy and just by horse. Um, now, what if this was not a public good? If this was a private good like FedEx, if I lived way out in the middle of nowhere, would they be willing to deliver mail to me? Probably not. Um, if nobody was around, a, a private, uh, privately owned company would probably say, yeah, no. Mm -mm. And now FedEx and, and UPS will deliver, but they probably charge an arm and a leg because they know they've got to go so far out and they can't hit other houses and do deliveries at the same time. Now, here's how we decide if something's going to be a public good or a private good. And I, I love this example. I think this is a great example. So the situation we're going to start with, there are farmers in Cap County that have to drive, drive an average of 100 miles to get to their crops. So basically, <coughs> what I want you to imagine is you're a farmer. You live in Hendersonville and your, your farm, your crops are in Mount Juliet. So you have to drive all the way to Rivergate, Old Hickory, to get to Mount Juliet. Now, if you hopped in a boat, you can be to Mount Juliet in five minutes. So if there was a bridge from Hendersonville to Mount Juliet, wouldn't that save you a whole lot of driving time? Yes. So everybody's trying to decide, you know, do we want to build this bridge? It's going to reduce costs. Okay. Now, who's going to benefit? Well, obviously the 100 farmers that are interested in this, they're gonna save $20,000 over the years, not a year, over the years, uh, because it's gonna save them in gasoline costs. But there's a million residents that would benefit as well. And those million residents would save about $20. I mean, think about it. If there was a bridge from Hendersonville to Mount Juliet, wouldn't you drive across it? And it would save you gas money. So the total benefit of building this bridge is $22 million. Sounds like it needs to be built. Well, let's look at it in the free market. As a private good, the farmers could all chip in and build the bridge, but it's going to cost them $100,000 each. Hmm. Spend $100,000 to save $20,000. What are you going to do? I think it's a no brainer. We're not going to build the bridge. Uh, I'll just drive, drive around because I'm going to lose $80,000 for this bridge. But if we look at it as a public good, okay, remember it's a $22 million benefit, uh, $20,000 to the farmers and $20 each to each resident. So what if we do a one-time tax for $10? Everybody chips in $10 and we build the bridge. Everybody benefits, okay? So the fact that the farmers were willing to say, mm, $20 versus $100,000, we're not building it. That's technically a market failure. It will not exist in the free market. But as a public good, taxing everybody $10 each, every uh, citizen gets at least a $10 benefit and the farmers get, what, $19,990 benefit? Um, it's going to be a public good and something owned by the government. Now, uh, all public goods are examples of market failures. Again, let's go back to Moss Wright Park. If you had to have a membership to go to Moss Wright Park, you probably wouldn't do it. It'd be a market failure. But the fact that the government owns it and maintains it, we all benefit from it, okay? The electric company, that's technically a market failure because if that was a private business, let's say I owned it and I'm Scrooge, uh, and you live out in the middle of nowhere, and, and some of you in our zone, you do. You live up on big hills and things like that. I might look at you and go, yeah, I'm not providing you electricity. That's going to cost me too much money to run lines to your house, and you're the only house up there, so why do I need to do it? Buy some candles. And think of how many people would be without lights. But because it is a public good, the government will run those lines to all the houses and make sure that everybody has access to electricity. Uh, another externality, out-of-state drivers. We pay taxes to have good roads in Sumner County and in the state of Tennessee. Uh, anybody that travels to Tennessee and drives on our roads, 
Uh, they did not pay taxes for. Mm. Okay, maybe they shouldn't drive on our roads. Um, well, no, that's just one of those externalities where um, there are other people benefiting from us having good roads and, and not having potholes than just us. We are benefiting, but it's also benefiting people that come in. And that can also take us to, um, uh, sorry, uh, that can take us to free riders. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Out of state people driving on Tennessee roads are free riders. But again, if you drive in another state that you're not paying taxes in, you're a free rider. But it kind of washes itself out and, and it benefits every one of us. Now let's talk about positive and negative externalities. So we're going to go back to this bridge again. Remember, we built a bridge from Hender building a bridge from Hendersonville to Mount Juliet. Fails in the free market, but we're going to build it as a public good. Now the positive externalities will be uh, it's going to aid visitors. Like think of how much more you might go to Mount Juliet if it wasn't so long of a drive. Yeah. Uh, you're going to hire a local construction company to build this bridge. That's good for the economy. It's going to boost uh, local traffic and businesses. Again, I might hop on the bridge and go to Mount Juliet for dinner. But now there can be negative externalities too. The traffic or the construction is going to lower air quality. And if you're building over Old Hickory Lake, could that affect like fishing spots and duck cutting blinds and things like that? Uh, even just the way we take our boats uh, through through the lake on the summers. Uh, the river environment is altered. It could harm the fish that are in there. And maybe there was, we don't have this, but let's just say we had a ferry company that would take people back and forth across Old Hickory Lake. It would drive that family out of business. And for that one family, I mean, that's like a huge, no, this is what we've always done. Don't put us out of business. Um, and that would be a major externality for, for those people. Uh, another externality, uh, air pollution and water pollution. These are negative externalities of factories. Factories are great. They build things for us. They make our lives easier, but then they're polluting the environment. And that is something where, you know, again, we talk about that government stepping in. The government has stepped in to have OSHA and the EPA to try to keep people from just dumping toxic waste in our waters and, and in the land and doing things that harm the environment. Now, let's talk about poverty a little bit. Uh, we all see it on TV. You see those commercials, donate to here. Um, you may know somebody that's living that way. Um, you may not. You could have somebody you're sitting next to and, and not realize that they are. Um, for the most part, on average, uh, Americans enjoy a high standard of living, especially when you compare us to other countries, okay? But 15% of Americans live in poverty. That's huge. It's a huge number. And what's even worse is of that 15%, it's about 32% of that 15 that's, that's children. And when you're a child, I mean, you can't even work till you're 16. There's nothing you can do to help get yourself out of poverty, except get an education so that when you're 18, you can, can go out there and, and create, uh, create a new life for yourself. Um, so poverty, it, it's a huge problem. And so let's talk about the government's role and the welfare system in it. Uh, and that's one of the things that the government does. The government does several things. They try to redistribute the wealth through uh, progressive taxation. We have uh, welfare, uh, we have food stamps. Um, now food stamps used to actually be actual stamps and they were real pretty in color like pink ones and blue ones and green ones. I remember being a little, a little kid, probably second, third grade and was behind somebody in a store and they were paying, I literally like pulling them out of a coupon book, like ripping them out. And I remember looking at my mom going, what's that? I want that kind of money, it's pretty. Um, and you know, she explained to me what food stamps were. Now you don't actually have to get the stamps. It actually looks like a debit card. They call it an EBT card. And if you go into certain groceries and uh, like Dollar General has it and sometimes your drugstores have them where they'll say we accept EBT, uh, you can go in there and purchase things on that card. And uh, if there's a certain dollar amount on it, then it just you know ticks away till it gets to zero. 
And I love the fact that it's an EBT card because nobody really knows that you're you're paying with, with the food stamp program. Um, and it gives people a little bit of anonymity with it. Yeah. And that is going to be the end of 7.6 and the end of this topic. Hope that you enjoyed it. And I will see you back for the next lesson.